Hi everyone and welcome back to Coding with Flutter. Today we will start looking at some fundamental features of the Dart language and we will see how to use them in practice. And knowing about these features and when to use them will make you more productive because I will show you how to write Dart code that is clear, lightweight and more robust. So let's get started. Chapter 1 is about type inference. And type inference refers to the ability of the compiler to automatically infer the type of an expression so that we don't have to declare the type ourselves. So in this example, I have declared three variables of type string, int, and double. But if I want, I can declare these variables with var because Dart is able to infer the type of each of these variables from the expression on the right side of the assignment. So as long as you declare and initialize variables at the same time, then Dart can infer the type for you. However, if you write something like this, then on this line x is declared but not initialized. So Dart will decide that the type of x is dynamic and this means that we can assign values of any type to x like this. So the takeaway here is that Dart will infer the correct type for us if we use var as long as variables are declared and initialized at the same time. Chapter 2 is about the difference between final and const. And as we have seen, Dart can infer the type of variables when we declare and initialize them with var. However, after a variable is created like this, it can be assigned again. And sometimes this is what we want, but other times we want variables to be assigned only once. And to do that, we can declare a final variable. And when we do this, then we are no longer allowed to assign the variable a second time. Okay, so how do we use final variables in practice? So here is a common example where I define a new widget class with a constructor. And in this case, I define two properties with final because I don't want their value to change inside the widget. So final means single assignment. But what about const then? Well, const is used to define a compile time constant, and typically we use const to define simple hard-coded values in our application, like I have done over here. By the way, we can use const even when defining widgets, as long as everything inside them is a compile time constant. And in this example, we have declared the constructor of this placeholder widget to be const. And we can do that because every single thing that is defined inside this widget class is also a constant. And when a widget has a const constructor, then it can be called like this. And as a result, Flutter is able to optimize this code so that the placeholder content widget is not rebuilt when the parent changes. So in summary, final means single assignment and const defines a compile time constant and you should prefer const over final when possible. Chapter 3 is about the difference between named and positional parameters. And when we create a function or a method in Dart, we often want to give it some input parameters. For example, this constructor takes a title and a message, which are used to initialize these instance variables. And as you can see, I have used the curly braces here to specify that these are named parameters. And this means that when I create my placeholder content widget, I need to supply the input parameters by name. However, if I wanted, I could have opted to use positional parameters instead. And I could do that by removing the curly braces in the method declaration. And then I have to pass in these parameters in positional order when I create this widget. And in this case, you may still be able to work out that the first argument is the title and the second is the message. But Flutter widgets often have many more inputs than this. So using named parameters really helps making your code more readable. By the way, you can mix and match positional and named parameters if you want, as long as you put the positional parameters first, followed by the named parameters. And this means that when we call this method, we can pass in the context directly, but we have to supply the parameter names for the title and content. And this pattern is very common in Flutter. For example, here we declare a text widget with a positional parameter representing the text string and a style property which is a named parameter. To sum up, with Dart you can use named or positional parameters and you can even mix and match them by declaring the positional parameters first followed by the named parameters. And as a general rule, I always want my code to be clear and self-explanatory and I choose to use named or positional parameters accordingly. Next, let's look at required and default parameters. You see, these named parameters that we have declared here are not required 
and this means that we could omit them when we create this widget and the compiler would be happy about it. However, when we do this, then the parameters get a null value and if we execute this code, we would get an assertion and a big red screen because we are not allowed to pass a null string to a text widget. So this makes us sad and we need to prevent this from happening. So here we can specify that these parameters are required. And when we do this, we get a warning telling us that the parameters are required. And so we are more likely to fix this in the code. But this doesn't stop us from passing some new values explicitly. And if we really want to be strict, we can add an assertion in addition to the required annotation. And with these checks, we can ensure that the parameters are given at compile time and if we pass null values, we get a runtime assertion that is easy to fix because it will point exactly to this line. So all these checks help us to write safer code. By the way, what I have said about required and null values may change once non-nullable types are added to the Dart language. And the idea here is to specify that an object cannot be null at compile time. And this feature alone can solve an entire class of problems and it was built from the start in the Swift and Kotlin languages. So you can follow this page for updates on this feature. Okay, so required is very useful, but there are some cases where it is more appropriate to specify some default values, which look like this. And with this change, when we omit the parameters, then the default values are used, or we can supply some values ourselves. By the way, Default values can also be set with positional parameters and this is done by surrounding the positional parameters with square brackets and using this syntax. In summary, you can use required, assert and default values to make your code safer. Okay, so that's all for today and we'll look at more features in the upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.